Welcome back to the Essentially You podcast. Kayla, honey, how are you doing today? Doing well. Thanks for having me. It's such a pleasure to have you back. And since you've been back, you have, you got a PhD, you're a doctor. And yes. I would love for you to just, cause you shared this epic win with me. I would love for you to share your epic win with your kind of finishing out your PhD with your dissertation and the study that you did with, um, with the 12 women. For sure. So I got my PhD in natural and holistic medicine, and my dissertation was on optimizing fertility through quantum medicine. And I did a study and I had 12 women. It's crazy to me how hard it is to get people to do a study, <laughs> but 12 women, which is good. Um, and so we worked together for 12 weeks. We worked to optimize mind, body, spirit, and we ended up getting six of those 12 women pregnant. They all had struggled with infertility. What was crazy to me is they all had trauma in their lives that we worked to help them heal, which I think was correlation to their fertility struggles. So six women got pregnant out of 12, 50% success rate. So cool. That is such a cool, I, I would yeah. love to dive. I know we're going to talk about functional labs today um, yeah. regarding just understanding our hormones a little bit better. And I know women so deeply want to understand because so often they're told that everything's fine or that even mm -hmm. they won't even get, they don't get tested for it. They're just told there's no reason to test for that. So they get gaslit there. But before we dive into that, I would love for you to talk a little bit about in your experience with women with infertility, you know, it's, it sounds to me kind of a little bit about the work that you're doing is really up leveling some of the epigenetics and obviously overcoming the mm -hmm. trauma piece too. And so can you just talk a little bit about your experience in working with women regarding infertility and what are some of the biggest, because obviously the new stats came out one in six of us mm -hmm. will struggle and more and more of us are waiting until we're a little bit older mm -hmm. to have children as well. And so I know that this all, all of these things are kind of playing a role. You know, a lot of women aren't told uh, that if they're on birth control for, you know, a decade or more, mm -hmm. that it's going to be an issue. You just a lot of things where we just kind of been gaslit into, you know, just being told that we can get pregnant whenever we can. <laughs> I know that's what I was told when I was a little girl, like, yeah, right. don't, don't get pregnant was what I was told, right. You know, and that it's so easy to do that. It's so accidental, you know, that, you know, it, it just happens for you. And I, obviously that narrative is shifting and changing, but what are some of the biggest issues that you're seeing that you're working with women regarding infertility? Yeah, sure. So the first I want to say is definitely we were taught we could have sex and get pregnant and it's that easy, but I also think it goes in the other direction. We're gaslighted a lot around you're 35, your fertility is going to fall off a cliff. You might as well just do IVF. And that is not true. I work with people. My oldest client was 45 years old. We got her pregnant naturally and I had my last at 40. So you can definitely get pregnant later in life. And after 35, you had your babies in your forties, forty, correct? Yeah, 41. Yeah. I had kids. Yeah. 41. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so yeah, it it's absolutely I, you know, I know so many women who are freezing their eggs in their thirties yeah, um, because they're just being told that that's what they need to do. And I, mm -hmm. I really want to open the door for wh what's truly possible. But, but one of the things that a, a dear friend of mine pointed out to me recently, and I hadn't even thought about this, but that, you know, they, a lot of our whole, our family society, they gear us up for college. They gear mm -hmm. us up for the PhD program, if that's, we so choose to do, we, we spend what a year or more planning a wedding. If, if we're getting married, mm -hmm. you know, it's just all this planning that we do to gear up, but we never were told or were ever, you know, kind of brought to light that we should really be planning for conception. And if, and mm -hmm. honestly, and not to say that those things aren't important to plan too, because absolutely they are, <laughs> but I would have to say that in all the things that I've planned for in my life, Probably what I thought was the most important thing for me to plan for was for having Kingston, not one to clear mm -hmm. my trauma. I was abused my whole childhood. So I know mm -hmm. I, one, I just didn't want to do what was done to me to my son. You know, I didn't mm -hmm. want that to happen. So I knew, and I didn't, and, and unconsciously, you know, I didn't want, mm -hmm. you know, I, I know I'm a disassociated attachment uh, style, you know? And so I was like, you mm -hmm. know, is that going to like land on my son's lap? You know? And right. so I wanted to clear a lot of that up for one, but then also you making sure that my metabolic health was dialed, making mm -hmm. sure that, that my egg quality is great. 
making sure that my hormones are dialed as well. My mm -hmm. thyroid hormone, progesterone, all of these things, my blood sugar is balanced, mm -hmm. you know, all these things that I took into consideration. And then I ended up doing a program with one of my dear friends, Dr. Cleopatra, her primester mm -hmm. program. And so like, then I was working on all those aspects as well, which is very similar to what you were talking about yes. in the program or the research um, mm -hmm. program that you did with the 12 women it was yes. really getting into that deeper energetic epigenetic where we are up leveling. Mm -hmm. You were making, not only did you get 12 women pregnant, but you made six of the 12, but you made six super mm -hmm. babies. Right. For yeah. sure. For sure. And that's what I was going to say. You know, our fertility doesn't fall off our cliff at 35, but there's definitely things that you need to do to be proactive, to optimize your body for pregnancy and fertility, no matter what your age is. I always say, if you want to have a baby tomorrow or in five years, you need to start thinking about these things now. And some of what I do and some of what I see that are causing these fertility issues are a lot of what we're going to talk about here today with the functional lab testing, but a lot of think times Times there's a root cause underneath the fertility issues. And it's not just that you're 35 plus, it's that you have one of these issues going on. Your thyroid is off and not working the way that it needs to. Maybe you're either hyper or hypo. Maybe your estrogen pathways are not working the way they need to. They're not detoxing the way they need to. So you're estrogen dominant, or maybe that, you know, your, your insulin's not working. You've got all these issues with PCOS and you're diagnosed with PCOS. So there's many things that can cause fertility issues. But all of that is fixable if we figure out what those roots are. And that's what we do through functional labs. Hmm, I love that. Yeah. And I mean, that's, yeah. that is the name of the game. And I, I believe that we all deserve to optimize our body, whether we're trying to get pregnant or not, you know, mm -hmm. so that I always think about our reproductive system in so intertwined, so deeply connected mm -hmm. to our gut health, our liver health, our liver, you being able to process mm -hmm. excess estrogen to our hormone health including mm -hmm. our metabolic hormones like thyroid and insulin to our emotional resilience. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, and you know, it's interesting to me that a lot of us weren't told that your reproductive system, your monthly cycle is really predicated on the health of it, on how healthy mm -hmm. your body is. And mm -hmm. that is especially for women that a lot of things have got to be working good enough in mm -hmm. order to have a really robust and quite functional reproductive system, a monthly cycle every single month. And so I don't think anyone's ever told us that, you know, we're just kind of like told to take Motrin or told oh to gosh. deal with our menstrual cramp, you know, all the things that we were kind of, or just told to be on birth control, whatever that may be, but that we weren't ever looking at like, oh, maybe because you are literally grow, you have the capacity of growing babies mm -hmm. that there is so much about the health and well being of your body, your mitochondria, your cells, mm -hmm. all of it that really need to be dialed in order mm -hmm. to allow for your reproductive system to be primed up to actually conceive if that's something you so choose to do. For sure, for sure. And I know a lot of your listeners too are heading into perimenopause and menopause. And so if you're listening to this thinking, well, I'm past my prime for making babies, you still need to be thinking about this because the more you can ovulate, I'm sure you know this, Dr. Maritza, the more you can ovulate before you go into peri and menopause, the better you're going to set yourself up for optimal health in your senior years. You're going to be free from diseases, from heart disease, and even Alzheimer's and dementia have to do with how well your body's working in your reproductive years. So it's yes. all super important, all tied together. Absolutely. Well, your reproductive longevity or your, your reproductive you know, age, you know, mm -hmm. I say right it to the wheels fall off. Like you want to be right? ovulating. <laughs> I mean, if we could, we wish we should be ovulating all the way into our hundreds. You know what I'm saying? If, the, right. if that was, if it was working in our favor, because those that's the protection, you know, how we stay mm -hmm. protected yeah. is that those reproductive hormones are continuing to cycle every single month. And the more that we can continue to have them do that, we can extend mm -hmm. our reproductive age, the better off we are. And then obviously, at some point they are going to drop, they are going to precipitously decline as our ovaries go into retirement. But then, you know, the, the options of ensuring that your metabolic health is locked and loaded, making sure the mm -hmm. other hormones are optimized and even considering if it's a fit for you, you know, kind of exploring the world of bioidentical hormones. And mm. so figuring out yeah. what, again, everybody's, everyone's got to look at that for themselves, but I am, I am, this is the one thing that I have, I realized in the work that I do is that I find that women suffer needlessly mm -hmm. and that we shouldn't have to. 
that we should nope. not have to suffer needlessly. And so I'm a big fan of using every single tool mm -hmm. in the toolbox. I'm like, you got a tool I agree. I can use because hook me up. Like if I'm going to agree, right. I mean, I'm yes. my mama had, my mom went into menopause at 50, the average age, 52, maybe 53. And I'm mm. like, can I like, can I push it to 55? But then also, you know, what, what is a tool if I plan on living at least into my eighties, what do I got? What's, what do you got for me for the next 30 years? It's a long time, mm -hmm. you right. know? For sure. A very long time. Got off track. I was just going to say, you know, it's about laying those foundational pieces, which we're going to talk about here in a minute, you know, with nutrition and lifestyle pieces. But definitely, if you need a little help with bioidentical, I'm all for that too. And I actually myself just started playing around a little bit. My functional doctor, because, you know, you can't treat yourself. So my functional doc was like, you're a little low in testosterone. I was like, all right, let's try a little bit. I feel like I'm in my twenties. I mean, my sex drive, my energy, I'm like, damn, I should have tried this sooner. <laughs> so yeah, you can, you can optimize all the way into your, you know, midlife and feel amazing, but use the tools that you have for sure. Absolutely. I 100%. And again, mm -hmm. having, I love that you shared that. I love that yeah. you shared that. <laughs> Mo, so many women do not know that we start to precipitously drop testosterone in our mm -hmm. late twenties, late twenties, yeah. ladies. You know, and, you know, Crazy. it can really feel <laughs> like, and a lot of us, again, we're not taught to know what it feels like to have mm -hmm. lower um, or like less optimal testosterone levels. Cause in the typical healthcare system, it's not a hormone mm -hmm. that we should even be concerned about, or we, nope. there's no FDA <laughs> regulated or approved testosterone therapy for women at all. So mm -hmm. you have to work with a functional doctor in order to get compounded testosterone. So just a heads up there, but yeah, yeah. if you're feeling unmotivated, your confidence is gone. Your sex drive is gone. You know, you're feeling, you don't, you're not feeling as, as energized or youthful. Mm -hmm. It could absolutely be testosterone. So it's a consideration. Mm -hmm. If you're not sleeping at night, if you're feeling more anxious, your mental resilience is in the, in the gutter, like you are, you're feeling more stressed than usual. It could be progesterone that we know that precipitously mm -hmm. drops. And those two, they love to drop together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> estrogen too. Estrogen. A lot of people think menopause is high estrogen. No, it's low estrogen. And that estrogen yeah, is dropping estrogen. off that cliff. Yes. No. Yeah. I just, so. I mean, thirties. Like I find that mm -hmm. women are dealing with stuff in their thirties. It's insulin, it's mm -hmm. testosterone, it's progesterone, estrogen. She could mm -hmm. still be doing her thing, but yes, as we get into yeah. our mid to late forties and menopause, oh, oh, estrogen. She's mm -hmm. definitely not where she was anymore. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about functional awesome. labs. Let's yeah. talk about the let's labs that are, that are actually giving us some insight here. Kayla, honey, do you recommend foundational labs? Like when do you recommend having baseline labs so that we kind of get a sense of where mm -hmm. we're at in the journey? Yes. I recommend a, a yearly health, you know, well visit with your, if you have a primary doctor, like for myself, I have my functional doctor. She runs all my basic lab work every year, does all my blood counts, my A1C, you know, all those fasting insulin does those basic metabolic, you know, and, and basic blood labs. So you definitely want to do that yearly just to kind of see your overall health picture. But when you want to bring in these functional labs, this is when you want to get a deeper picture. You want to look at symptoms and say, okay, my blood labs saying normal, but I'm still experiencing symptoms. That's when you want to dive a little deeper and say, maybe the blood labs aren't necessarily picking up what I need to find, especially when it comes to hormones. When you test hormones through blood, as I'm sure you know this, but blood work, it's going to show a snapshot in time of what's happening right when these hormones are tested. It doesn't show fluctuations. It doesn't show methylation. It doesn't show detox or excretion, how the body's actually using the hormones. So getting a deeper dive look into this root cause and the whole hormone picture is where functional labs come in for mm -hmm. the hormone testing. And then we can also talk to, I like to do additional, I like to do hair tissue mineral analysis to see where our minerals are at. I like to do a gut test. And those three are kind of my go-tos when it comes to looking deeper. Hmm. So annual, we want to run the blood labs. And do you recommend yes. running the full thyroid panel then too? If you're having symptoms of thyroid issues, yes. If you're not having any symptoms, I would say still do T3 and T4 um, and TSH, but if you're having any symptoms, then yes, do the antibodies, do the full thyroid panel. And two, think about what your overall toxic burden is. If you have breast implants, if you have, um, you know, if you've struggled with an autoimmune in the past and you want to kind of see where you're at with that, you definitely want to run the full thing. 
Hmm. And even just to kind of spend a little bit of time, I know we're going to get into functional labs, but just, I've gotten so many questions about the, just the typical labs. And I will say that it is so rare to get a fasting insulin. I mean, you really have to beg for it. I find so fast beg for the fasting insulin. (laughs) Yeah. Functional doctor will do it. Yeah, absolutely. Your <laughs> regular doctor, doctor will, will totally be like, what the hell is that? I'm yeah, not doing that. Maybe I'll run a hemoglobin and A1C if you're like over right. 35 years old. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So, so obviously a functional doctor is the best place to go. And when we're talking about functional labs, that's the only place you're going to get these labs. Anyway, right. I'm just going to be real clear, get what you can from your primary Mm-hmm. you know, and, and that is the C, you know, the complete blood panel, lipid panel, metabolic mm-hmm. panel, see if you can get hemoglobin, A1C, fasting glucose, a C-reactive protein, and any other, anything that they'll give you get, get right, as much right. as you can. And then mm-hmm. now we're talking about the functional labs to kind of tack onto what's going on specifically for our hormones. Um, so let's, mm-hmm. let's start with hormones and then let's move over to mineral and then over to gut testing as well. How does that sound? Sure. Sure. And I would say if you can find somebody in your area, that's like the person I'm seeing a functional doc that sees locally, like my doc will run my insurance for any lab I want. And so if you can find that sometimes your regular PC is not going to do that. It's not going to run some of these more, you know, more comprehensive tests. So there is people like that out there in your local community. So look for them, but if not, definitely go through your regular PC and get what you can get, like you said. Mm -hmm. Um, But for the hormone tests, the functional lab tests that I like to do, I run the dried urine hormone test through Meridian Valley Labs, which is similar to Dutch. Meridian Valley was first on the market with their dried urine hormone test. And I feel like it's more comprehensive and it allows more, it shows more markers. And so again, what this test will do is it'll show you how your hormones are fluctuating, how they're being methylated, detoxed and excreted for your estrogens and some of your androgens. It'll also show you a full picture of your stress hormones, your glucocorticoids, your mineral corticoids. It'll show if you're in adrenal fatigue. It'll show if you're in pre- adrenal fatigue, which is a thing that I'm seeing a lot now. Um, it'll show, you know, how you're, you're detoxing all of that. It'll show your melatonin, what that looks like, some organic acids, which are the byproducts when you're breaking down some of your B vitamins that can show your insulin. It can show if you're insulin resistance. So many different things can be shown on these labs. And then once we figure out what it's showing, what it's saying, You want to work with a practitioner who can read it and who can write a protocol around it. And then we will tackle what exactly is going on in there and tackle that root cause or causes. Mm, Okay, perfect. So, and then what's so great about either of those tests is they're at home tests. And so you, you just take it, you do it at home, you get it sent in and then obviously not going to lie, not easy to read if you don't know how to read them. So I wouldn't recommend you just get your (laughs) results. I mean, even our normal, you know, your normal work, blood workup can be really difficult to read if you don't know what you're looking for. Okay. And then you also love to look at kind of what the mineral, what what kind of minerals mm-hmm. we're dealing with in terms of doing a, a hair sample? Exactly. So a hair tissue mineral analysis will show our mineral status over a 12 week period. And the reason I like to test through tissue, which I use hair is because minerals in blood are only going to show a snapshot again, what the minerals are doing. Blood's a transportation mechanism. So it's going to transport these minerals. And sometimes it can show, you know, maybe it shows your minerals are balanced in blood work, but it's not looking inside the tissue. So it can, it's not, an accurate representation of exactly what your minerals are doing. So take magnesium for an example. Magnesium is intracellular. It's inside the cell. So when you test it through blood, it might show normal. That just means that it's it's kind of pulling some of that out of the cell. It's not giving us a full representation of if we're deficient in the cells. And again, cellular health, that's kind of the basis of everything. We want good cellular health. And so it can also show us if we have toxic metals in our cells. And if we have too many toxic metals or any at all, actually, that's going to cause us to not have enough minerals. The toxins kind of go into the cell and push the minerals out. And then you have mineral deficiencies, you have mineral imbalances and minerals are spark plugs of life. They really control all the processes in the body, how well your hormones are balanced, how well your thyroid is working, how well you're, you know, if you're in sympathetic or parasympathetic nervous response, if you're in a fight or flight. So it's super important to figure out these minerals and make sure that they're balanced and you're not highly toxic with metals. And then, (laughs) and then the gut part, obviously all of this is interconnected. 
You know, yes. if our, if our gut health isn't great, we're going to see hormone issues. We're going to see cellular damage. We're going to see mitochondrial damage. Obviously, if we have heavy metal issues, we're going to see a lot of our hormones are deregulated too. And so what are we looking for when it comes to gut testing? Yeah. So I like to do the microbiome analysis from biome FX. And the reason why I do that is because I've done the research on the different companies that are out there. I know there's many different companies. GI map is one, you know, there's a couple different ones, but microbiome labs, I feel has done the research. They have the best technology. They're kind of the forerunners in this market. And so what I'm looking for on these tests is I'm looking to see what your gut if you're dysbiosis, meaning you have more bad gut bacteria than good gut bacteria, there's so many different viruses and bacteria and bugs and different things. And it's so crazy to me because I'll run these tests, like give you an example. Recently, I ran one on a male working with him and his wife, but he's super healthy. He's like a marathon runner, eats super clean. And he had like five bugs, like terrible bugs that you even have to kill with antibiotics. There's no other way to kill them in his gut. And he never would have known that he was asymptomatic. He thought he was doing super clean, being healthy, but the gut test showed otherwise. And what would happen is some of these bugs actually can cause issues down the road with colon cancers and different things like that. So getting ahead of it before when you're not having symptoms is going to be super important. So I love to run that test on everybody to see where their gut microbiome is. They have more bad guys than good guys and see what we need to do to fix the gut. And as you know, all processes start in the gut, most processes. So if your gut's off, it's going to cause hormonal issues. It's going to cause metabolic issues. It's going to cause immune system issues, all of it. So, mm -hmm. so checking on that gut is very important as well. I agree. I agree. All these tests yeah. are so, so critical. Okay. So let's say first mm -hmm. I want to address what happens, you know, you get your labs back. What do we do with the results? I mean, I know the answer, but let's, let's break it yes. up for everybody. <laughs> Sure. So first I want to say everybody listening, this might sound very overwhelming and you might be thinking that's like cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. These tests are so expensive. Um, yeah. Start where you can. I always say start, if you can't do all three of these tests, start with the bare minimum, do a hormone test, see where you're at, start working on fixing your hormones, or you could even do it backwards, do a gut test and then do the hormone test, but meet yourself where you're at. I meet my clients where they're at, start where you can. But then if you can, if you're somebody who's like, I'm having a ton of symptoms, I want to do with everything I can to figure out what's going on here. So I don't have to struggle with this anymore. Let's throw everything we can at it. So we'll run all three of these tests. And then once we get the results, the packages that I work with, I have one call with me to go over those results. I literally go line by line. And I say, this means this, that means this, this means this. And then I write a protocol around that. So I tell people, this is what you need to do. This is what needs to be optimized and fixed. And this is how you do it. And how we do that is through targeted nutrition. So these tests will tell me what nutrition is going to work best for your body. Are you deficient in certain nutrients, minerals, different vitamins? Are you deficient there? Do we need to optimize here? So it's targeted nutrition. It's more than just eating healthy because like with my example, that man was eating healthy. It's more than that. It's about optimizing your nutrition for your body and figuring out what your body specifically needs. It's targeted supplements. I always start with food first, but then there'll be some holes that usually need to be filled. Sometimes you just can't eat the quantity needed of the food to get what the supplement can give you in that high dose. So take estrogen dominance, for example, sometimes I'll put somebody on DIM to bring down that estrogen. You have to eat eight cups of broccoli a day to get all the DIM you can get from a supplement. Nobody's eating eight cups of broccoli a day. No. So, <laughs> um, so targeted supplements and then lifestyle pieces. Are you in adrenal fatigue? What do we need to do to work on your stress? How can we calm your nervous system? How can we calm your, you know, your brain? Or do you have um, a lot of anxiety going on in your brain and in your mind? How do we calm that through lifestyle pieces? So mind, body, and spirit, nutrition, supplements, lifestyle pieces to optimize the body, to fix what is wrong and to get rid of these symptoms. So you can live healthy and feel amazing through your whole entire life. Yeah, no, that makes so much sense. I mean, here's the thing with <laughs> functional labs, as you know, is that you, you, the reason why you're having them run by a functional doctor is they're actually going to create a protocol for you. Very rarely mm -hmm. you're going to be able to take those labs and make, make your own kind of recommendations from them. And mm -hmm. so it, it's going to be a commitment. What, what's been really interesting to me is I've been talking a lot about labs and, and reaching out to a lot of my community, not surprised by any means, but how a lot of people are really having a hard time just getting primary labs done. Mm 
you know? Mm -hmm. And so it, it's been really interesting. I, I do believe that labs are really the gateway into really understanding what's going on with our body. And I'm really, I really appreciate this conversation because I think it, it needs to be said and the conversation needs to be happen that needs to happen that we really need to advocate for as many labs as we can. And we really need to be open to getting them tested, even if it can't be once a year. And a lot of people maybe cannot make that kind of commitment every single year, but at least if you're struggling with something, you know, we know that the gut is such a big part of it. Go get, go get, go get gut tested. Or if you know, hormones are really out of whack, often it's going to show that we're going to need to do something with the gut anyway, but mm -hmm. that get, getting that information can be so, so, so important. So I just wanted to kind of just acknowledge if you're listening to this and you're thinking like, okay, how do I even make this work? Like I can't, mm -hmm. I'm trying, I got insurance and my GP won't run the standard stuff, you know, and I, that's mm -hmm. what I've been hearing so much recently that I just wanted to acknowledge you and just note that you kind of, kind of get to that place where it's just important to make the investment in figuring out what's going on um, so that you can go from there. For sure. For sure. And I always tell people, you know, you're going to end up saving money in the long run. So think where can I cut corners so that I can put money towards my health? Maybe it's, you're not going to Starbucks once, you know, every couple of days and you're using that money to buy good, healthy foods, or maybe you're, you know, you're not spending money on whatever your guilty pleasure is. Not to say that you can't have a guilty pleasure because I want you to live your life, but maybe you cut back a little bit and redirect those funds into something that's going to benefit your health. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it's, it's a reframe. It's really right. a reframe. And that's why I wanted us to just, I wanted to dig into it because I have been noticing in a lot of conversations I've been having recently, like I was just on a friend, phone with a friend of mine. I'm taking care of a, a friend who's a client, client right now. And I had a whole list of labs. I was like, go see if you can get as many of these as possible. We can go and order more functional labs as well. But like, let's see if we can get, you pay all this money in insurance. Mm -hmm. Go see what you can get done. Um, and then we can go from there. Cause even on our primary labs, I know we're talking about functional labs today too, but so often you're going to be told everything is normal when mm -hmm. the ranges at your, at, you know, kind of the, the standard ranges, especially for women are, are not necessarily mm -hmm. working in our favor. And so even having a functional doctor, I can't tell you how many, I have people sending me labs. I'm sure this happens to you Same every Same. day, every day. They're just like, okay, <laughs> this is what I got run. I was told everything is fine. I do not feel mm -hmm. fine. And I was like, okay, well, let's just work off of what we have here at the very least. And then from there, let's figure out what that next step is in more diagnostic lab testing. And so often, you know, people are literally at the, like the very end of like, let's say it's, you know, triglycerides, they're at 149, you know, and over, you know, and I'm like, that's not cool. That's not, that's mm. not normal. That is not normal <laughs> just because you're not 150. And I honestly feel anyone over a hundred I'm concerned. And so, mm. you know, it's, it's having a functional doctor who's able to look at these and even your standard labs and say, these normals aren't actually normal. This, mm. this should have been a red flag. You know, fortunately our healthcare system is very much the wait and see, you know, mm. for instance, the couple that you're taking care of right now, I'm sure his labs, his blood labs, from his normal mm -hmm. primary are normal, you know, yep. None, nothing that was, nothing that was queuing up in the gut was definitely, wasn't queuing up on his labs, mm -hmm. you know? And yep. so to him, everything was fine, you know, mm -hmm. from, uh, from the healthcare perspective. And so then you right. dig even deeper and you're just like, oh yes, this will queue up in like 15 years on your mm -hmm. other labs, you know, but then th that's a little too late. Those that's diminishing right. returns right there. And so I wanted to just really point out that even if you are running labs, regular labs, and you're getting the everything is normal talk, um, and you're not feeling super great, I do really want to inspire you to one, get, in a, get a second opinion. And two, because if you go back to that same doctor, they're going to give you the same rigor. They're going to say the same thing to you. Okay. <laughs> go somewhere else, get a second opinion and consider based on that running those extra labs. So for sure. What I'd love to ask you next, and I get, this, here's the thing, it's all bio-individual. I understand, mm -hmm. right? This guy's gut bugs is not somebody else's, you know, it, mm -hmm. someone else could have a parasite, you know, it, it, you know, gut wise, or someone could have just IBS or someone could have leaky gut syndrome, you know, whatever, whatever that may be, just even in the gut. But have you found, you know, working with so many people over the years and, you know, in all the research that you've done as well, 
there are some things that can really help to move the needle. And the reason why I asked this is because I, I know that people are listening today and thinking, man, I really want to get all these functional labs. I'm just gonna have to wait six months, but I feel like crap right now. Is there anything I can do right now to just kind of help move the needle until I can afford to get these labs? And this has been the case. I have clients who are just like, Marisa, I really want the, I really want the Dutch test. I really want, I, I don't have 500 bucks right now to pay for that, right. but is there anything I can do right now? And the reason why I said that is that one of the things that you said that you noticed a lot more than ever in labs, in the dried urine analysis, when you're looking at corticosteroids is that people are on the brink of adrenal burnout, adrenal fatigue. Mm -hmm. And okay. I, I'd wager that there's a lot more people than even who, what you're seeing. And so that is lifestyle, not to say that you can't, mm -hmm. You, well, let's be honest, you can't adapt the gen your way out of that a hundred percent. And so right. you, there's not enough of rhodiola in the world that's going to handle if you've got trauma <laughs> and you have perceived yeah. stress issues, you know what I'm saying? Like it'll help, but it's not going to save you from the chronic stress that you're dealing with. And so mm -hmm. that's obviously lifestyle modification where we've got to really address. So in your experience, what are some of the tried and true lifestyle modifications that you're offering whether you've got a full spectrum set of labs or not, are there some things, some trends that continue to come up pretty consistently or, or no? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So I would say, you know, if it's not in your gamut to run these functional labs, you can always look at your symptoms. And if you are feeling lousy, like you said, if you're having issues with sleep or with skin or with digestion, then you can probably say something's going on here. You know, I need to fix it until I can get the functional labs that I need. I would start with the foundational pieces, take a hard look at your life and say, am I doing these things to optimize my life? So the first thing is proper whole food balanced nutrition. It's the P in my hormone puzzle method. It's the very most important thing. Take a hard look at your diet and get real honest with yourself. Are you eating crap? I mean, I'm sorry. Are you eating fast food every day? Are you drinking lots of alcohol? Are you drinking coffee, you know, by the gallon? Like, are you doing these things that are jeopardizing your health? Because that's only going to fuel your symptoms and make them worse. So start there, start saying, what can I do to uplevel my nutrition? up level my, you know, my hydration, those foundational pieces, then looking at the stress piece, think, is there anything in my life that's not serving me? What can I remove or put on the back burner during this phase of my life until I can get these symptoms under control? And sometimes you can I always make the joke. You can't get rid of your mother-in-law or you probably can't quit your job, but you can put some boundaries in place on how you let those things affect you. So think about how can I put these boundaries in place so I can start to take care of myself and to take care of my health. Sleep is another big one. Look at your sleep, optimize your sleep. Try to go to bed and wake up same time, day and night. Try to get early morning sun in your eyes to start that circadian rhythm process and that serotonin, melatonin. Start, you know, get no blue light to minimal blue lights at night to start that melatonin production. Have a really comfortable bedroom. That sounds very basic, but I can't tell you how many people are like, their bedrooms are chaos. They've got clothes all over the floor. They've got like a thousand different knickknacks, like no, your body's stressed out when it goes into that room. You oh need calm and Especially women. And, yeah. Like you need to sleep All you can see is work. All you can see right. is all the things right. you need to do. Oh yeah, I know that. So your husband, maybe not so much. Up. Right. <laughs> yeah, I always tell my clients, the bedroom is for sex and sleep and that is it. Nothing else. No watching TV, no folding laundry, no working, like sex and sleep. That's it. Maybe you can read a book in there, but that's the only other thing. Um, but so it. just really thinking about how you can set those foundational pieces. And, and if you're thinking, if you're listening to this saying, I'm doing all of those things and I still feel like shit. Okay. Well, how can you up level? Where's some place where you maybe not are doing a hundred percent where you can up level and then do that. Start there. Or maybe you're not doing any of this and you feel super overwhelmed. Where can you start one place? One thing you can do tomorrow. Maybe you have a healthy breakfast in the morning. That's it. Throw, throw some smoothie stuff together and you've got that healthy breakfast. Just do one thing. Do one thing better today than you did yesterday. And that'll start you on this road until you can get some more functional testing and get some answers. Mm -hmm. That's a great place to start. I so appreciate that. Yeah. I really appreciate <laughs> that because I just want to meet everyone yeah. where they're at. Okay. Yeah. So let's say I came to you. I got the functional labs done. I've got my protocols. I'm doing my thing. I'm, I'm doing what you tell me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a straight A student. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. and then when would, when would you recommend that we read that I retest to look, would it be 90 days? Would it be less than that? Just to get yeah, a sense so of what I, people can expect. 
Yeah, I base it around symptoms. So we want to watch for symptom reduction. So if you're reducing your symptoms or things are going away, then you are, you know, things that we're doing are working. So I say at least once a year, you get some functional lab testing done, just like you would do traditional blood work. But if you get to that year mark and you were like, all my symptoms are gone, I feel amazing. Maybe you can stretch it to two to three years. But if in six months, you're still having a lot of crazy symptoms, we're still working really hard, we might need to dive a little deeper and do a retest and see if there's something that we might have missed. So I would say six months to a year, if you can't afford that, and you're not having symptoms, stretch it all the way to two to three years. Perfect. Okay. That gives yeah. me, I was just curious. I know, I know everyone's got their own way of, of kind of yeah. looking and assessing. I, I always think a lot of things can shift in about a 90 day period and yes. then some things don't, some things don't get better. Yeah. And so, yeah, you got to dive deeper. Um, but right. I find that if people are consistent with the protocols, they're good. They're, they stay on top of their supplements. They stay on top of how, whatever those health, those nutritional changes are that you can mm -hmm. start to feel even before 90 days, hands down, but like yeah. really, mm -hmm. really turn a corner. I, I think that we can, we can be a completely different person 90 days later, um, if For we've sure. got the right support, but yeah, I was just curious in terms of if, if, if testing was needed, especially because it's so expensive, what would that look mm -hmm. like? Just so people know when they go to their practitioner, you know, what they're being told and kind of what, what has been expectation regarding your, your patients. Perfect. Yeah. I so appreciate that. That is so helpful. And then the other thing I wanted to just dive back into really quickly is, you know, meeting women, you know, not only for infertility per se, but particularly around good menstrual health. Are there some things that you recommend that, that we should be looking out for when it comes to just good menstrual health? Obviously my ladies are most, I'm not gonna lie. They're most, they are mostly in perimenopause and menopause. So menstrual health for menopause, they're, it's gone. But for women in particularly perimenopause, where I feel like the, the pivots and the transition is so, so critical. Like I would say if there was a time in your life to like really lock and load the, the pivots, it's going to be then. And maybe I'm mm -hmm. feeling that because I'm going to be 44 this year. So I'm feeling it like nobody's business. And so what are some things that we should be thinking about as we are navigating, um, just keeping good menstrual health, especially as we start to see some ebbs and flows and changes? For sure. So the first thing I would say is make sure you're tracking your cycle. So you actually know what it's doing. I can't tell you how many people are not, they have no idea how long their cycles are. No idea when the last one was no idea if they're ovulating, like nothing track your cycles. You want to know the length of the entire thing. You want to know if you are ovulating, learn to read your body signs. Are you getting cervical mucus? If you want to do BBT, you can. Some people find that really tedious, but cervical mucus is the best indicator. You want to do an LH strip. You can do that too, but it's just make sure you're tracking and then lay those foundational pieces. Like I said before, that's just not for overall health. That's for menstrual health too. What does your diet look like? What is your lifestyle? How much stress are you under? You're sleep, your environmental toxins, all of that. So make sure you've got those foundational pieces. I also recommend if you're still cycling, maybe you haven't gotten to the point where you're irregular yet. You can do some cycle optimizing, cycle syncing with your foods and your lifestyle pieces where you're giving your body certain nutrients and doing certain exercises during certain times of the month for that cycle to optimize it in that phase that you're in. Um, and that actually correlates to what I'm going to give your listeners. It's going to be a cycle optimizing quick start guide so they can learn how to do that. Um, but yeah, just start to really optimize your body. Make sure you're getting good balanced whole food nutrition. If you need some supplements, you know, I recommend a few for pretty much everybody. And then if you have something you're struggling with specifically, you'll go, you know, a little further into supplements, but definitely everybody needs a good whole food, multivitamin or prenatal. So I don't care how healthy your diet is. You're going to have some holes just because of our food supply is not where it needs to be. So having a good whole food, prenatal or multi, having a good probiotic or prebiotic, get that gut health where it needs to be. Um, and then I recommend fish oil to most people because I find most people don't eat enough fish and we're deficient in these fatty acids that we need. So having a fish oil is also important, but just laying those foundational pieces, knowing what your cycle is doing and why will help you to optimize it as you go through the change and go into perimenopause and it starts to become irregular. But if you do those foundational pieces, you'll have minimal symptoms and it'll mm. be, you'll feel amazing. Yeah. Yay. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. That's so helpful. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. just, again, especially around our cycle, the big one, track it, 
Know if you're ovulating, yes. big one, especially in this yes. particular time where anovulatory cycles are going to happen. Mm -hmm. But no, ladies, no ovulation means no progesterone. And mm -hmm. you that's not going to be, eventually it's going to happen, but that's not always mm -hmm. a fun ride. And so the more that we can yeah. optimize progesterone levels in this phase, so important. Um, and, and note that it, it just like it takes 90 days to grow that follicle, mm -hmm. it's going to take 90 days to get that progesterone back. And so just note, it's a yes. journey, you know, it is a journey when it comes to our menstrual cycle. Um, okay. So talk to me about the wonderful, you did mention the gift already. So tell yes. me about what you got for us. Yes. So it's a cycle optimizing quick start guide, and it'll take you through the phases of your cycle. It also goes through the phases of the moon. If you're having irregular cycles or you're not cycling anymore, you're in menopause and it'll show you what foods and what lifestyle pieces to do. Even some supplements are mentioned in there during the four phases of your menstrual cycle to optimize it during that phase. So it's a really, really informative little guide books, full color. I've even got some recipes in there. Um, and then along with that, you get seven days free in my solving infertility summit. So if you have anybody that's struggling with infertility, listening to this show, that summit had over 50 experts talking all about fertility and hormones. And Dr. Maritza, I think you were in our first one. So they'll yeah. get to see your talk in there. And so they get seven days free of that. And you can grab all of that at coachkayla.com slash essentially dash you. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure Thank having you, you come on. Yeah. Such a pleasure you getting really real with us about what it looks like to get to the core root cause of what is going on. And then, you know, what it can look like if we're not able to do the whole gamut of things, you know? And so I really appreciate that because I know meeting, meeting our ladies where they're at is so important. And I know you do such a great job at doing that. And again, congratulations on your PhD. Oh, you know, it just, I, I love celebrating women who are doing big things in the world. I love celebrating yeah. you. Oh, thank you.